Okay, so, so I, I did, did say, say that, that I was going to um, try and get a chance to talk about fixing this weird geometry. Uh, let's have a look at it now. So I select it, I can see it's box 10. The best thing to do, this is pr um, the low geometry, the low poly geometry. Um, so the best thing to do is to go into 3ds Max. Which is just loading at the moment. What we're going to do is load up the low poly geometry once more. And then try and cut it again. And uh, pay attention to how it responds when we use the envelope to cut it up and maybe do a little bit of sort of checking and, and um, troubleshooting on what's happening there. So um, if you remember way back, um, we set up an envelopes project and we don't need any of the other ones apart from 10. All we need is 10 because this is the one that's gone a little bit funny. Here's our low poly geometry and um, well, let's have a look what happens when we apply the boolean to it. So I'll open up my little. Um, am I going to do it manually? I might do it manually if I can remember the type of boolean. Sometimes I forget what order everything goes in. So I'm just going to go to create um, compound objects and boolean. And what we want to do is. Uh, have a uh, intersection, I believe. I might get it wrong, so we'll see in a second. Pick operand B, box 10, any of this is good. All right, so that worked pretty well. I actually did it in the wrong order, so um, it's called itself default. I should have done it in the other order. So um, actually what I will do is select the box. I just, uh, sorry, I undid what I just did. Select the box, boolean, pick operand B, uh, and so, uh, hang on, <laughs> the wrong thing is still selected. Okay, so select the box, boolean, intersection, pick operand B, let's hit default. Ah, okay, it's gone weird when I do it in that order. So I guess that's sort of the troubleshooting already figured out. Um, for me, if I select the de default, do the boolean from there. This boolean operation is a little bit, um, well, sometimes it can go a little bit weird. That geometry looks fine. So this will be our new um, low poly geometry. Uh, what I will do is um, I'm going to export this. Yeah, export. Let's go into our project folder. We have this low folder, and I'd normally put it in the untextured. Um, I will actually, um, let's open a new window. I'll delete the broken one, which is that one. And I could just stick it in there and then run through the batch process again. Uh, actually, what I will do is I will stick it in here. Um, and instead of running the batch process, I will manually, um, because it's the low poly, it won't take very long. Box 010 to OBJ. Export. Okay, brilliant. All right, so now I'm going to go into PhotoScan. I'm going to open up my model. Photoscan is very good at sort of giving you a false sense of, of um, optimism in terms of the timing for things. It gives a countdown, and then when that countdown overruns, just decides to stop giving you a countdown. Um, all right, so here's um, we're back into the model. We're going to do pretty much the same thing that you would do if you didn't have Photoscan Pro, which is import our little model. Um, do, do, do. Textured, so 10. 
There we go, and we can see that the geometry looks all okay. It's not too bad at all. And we're going to create a texture. Okay, that looks much better. And now we export that model. Um, and I could put it, let's just to make sure that we delete the um, broken, uh, actually, low texture. Um, make sure we delete the broken one because that's no use to anyone. But instead of putting it into this textures folder, I'm going to put it for the moment into temp fix. Um, because I want to use my batch processor um, rather than I uh, do it manually. I don't want to faff around with xnormal. So let's call it box 010. Bam, export the textures out. All right, now we can go back. Um, before we do anything else, so the xnormal process is going to take the low poly model and the high poly model. I'm going to copy the high poly model into a directory called tempfix as well. Tempfix. And now what we can do, just delete everything in this um, project. I'll run my script again. And this is all good. We just want to run it when we point it where we want to go from, low poly, we just select tempfix, which only has one file in it, and the high poly tempfix as well. Uh, we do want to put it into oops, the maps. That should overwrite the maps that we've got already. And it's going to go through the normal process of texture mapping um, those sections. And then after that, we'll just take it into uh, Unity again, import it into Unity. And uh, it won't be too hard to position it. Even though we've moved everything else around, I'll show you um, that, that we won't have to worry too much about how to position it. And in fact, when we're exporting our bundle set. Uh, unfortunately, we do need to export the entire bundle set again, but I can show you another thing um, that will save a little bit of time. If we, when we deleted the um, elements from our Unity 3D um, world, uh, part of the export process is creating these prefab objects that we can just pull straight in to the environment again and that will speed things up a little bit. So actually I'll go back to my model um, and I'll just show you what we would do again. So we start off, we've already exported which means that there's this folder called prefabs that has the objects that we've just exported. So we can go to our world, say create empty, just select all of these prefabs again and pull them in. Um, there's, so here's our little broken bit, 10. We'll take that out for the moment. Bam. And let's, okay, I didn't notice last time, but these lights were sort of left in a bit of a funny position as well, so I'll, I'll put them somewhere a little bit better. Point light. This would probably make more sense if this was the only lighting for this scene because um, this idea of using a sort of cold, cool light from one side and a warm light from the front is quite nice, but I'm not sure how effective it's going to be with this. Actually, I might delete that one entirely because it's a little bit weird having that blue light and just 
sort of concentrate on the nice warm light at a higher intensity, maybe. Great. Okay, so here are the parts um, from our last um, our last export. Now we just want to replace obviously that chunk that's missing. So X normal has popped up asking us to um, if we want to tweak the settings for the height map. That's fine. So I'm just going to close it. It's going to use those settings that it sort of figured out itself, and it should run through. It's saving. Rendering and saving those textures. And now um, this script. Uh, well, it's done. It's stopped processing. I did think that it popped up to tell you that it stopped processing, but it hasn't. Um, and we've got a little chunk there. So we can close um, 3ds Max. If we go to our folders where we've got all these bits and pieces, where are they? Textured? This one? Yeah, okay. Um, so we can pull our fixed textured thing back in here. Now that we don't need it separate, and delete this because it was a copy. And if we look at our maps, the maps for 10 should be the correct ones now. Um, they should have updated. We can look at the time that they came through. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so these ones are the ones that have just updated. That's great. So what we want to do is go into our objects folder to Creek, where we have all these bits and pieces, and we want to overwrite those maps. Um, actually, I might do it. If I pull them in, then it will just it will make another copy with a slightly different name. So I'm just going to um, I right click on this objects folder, say Show in Explorer, and rather than pull them into Unity, I'm going to pull them in here, um, copy them, and it's going to overwrite them rather than because Unity is careful not to overwrite things, so we'll just call them like that name one, um, blah 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 heights one, blah blah blah, so that it doesn't overwrite that information. But we actually do want to overwrite that information. Now, if I go to my low texture as well, I want to find my box ten OBJ that I'm replacing and copy that in and overwrite it as well. So there we go. Uh, Unity will go through and import those new assets that it's detected have changed. Um, and what we can do now, it doesn't have to be in the same folder to set up the um, textures for this. Just create an another little temporary root folder where we're going to apply the texture just to this box 10 um, to save a little bit of time. So pull box 10 in, go to import, set object parameters, Pull in that root, and let's say oh, I do need two. Actually, I forgot the fact that I tested to make sure that there was more than one. Um, for for some reason, I don't know why. What I had against the idea of having only one object in that setup, but um, there we go. So it'll take a little bit longer than it needs to because it's going to set up the texture again for the, for a box twelve. Um, so. And in fact, I'll will modify. I'll modify. Let's fix that now. Um, while I'm here, import script, just because that's annoying. So when you come to use it, it won't have that problem because I'm about to change it and um, commit the change. Okay. Um, less than two.
All right, let's try that now. Import set objects. That one. Okay, great. So let's set materials. Does the same process that it would have done when we were first setting the materials for all of the rest of them. Um, uh, we can't see this object. It's sort of it's going to be somewhere else. There it is. It's in a funny place, but that's not a problem because you see. All of these objects have the same transformation applied to them because within them there's a mesh that's in its own coordinate space. So we don't have to worry about positioning this. All we do is we go to the transform, hit copy component, go back to this one, and paste the component. Actually, I've got no idea why that's gone into a weird place. Uh, why would. Oh, because I don't have global on. Let's try that again. Copy component, paste component. Oh, that's very strange. Okay, I'm going to pull it into this object first and try and. Okay. Let's do that one more time and hopefully it will work. There we go. Okay, so it was just I was in a in another root node with a different transformation. So the local transformation was putting it in a different place. It was me being a bit silly there. Um, so there we go. That looks a lot better than the last version with all those weird lines and sort of weird artifacts. So we're ready to um, export it again. And unfortunately, you do have to export the whole set, even though a lot of it's going to be a bunch of things that are already up online. And that's just because it has to recreate the index of all of the files. Um, I did. I'm just going to selectively. Um, build for iOS. Prepare for export. We don't need to propagate local positions anymore because they're all local now. This root node is in is sort of in its um, origin position, and everything else is is correctly placed. What we can do at the moment, actually, that will be quite fun is order things. I did say last time that we could order things to make them load in a different order. So let's do that. That will be quite fun. Um, all right. So our camera is here. Let's have the canvas start first. And the light is very, very small. So that will load really, really quickly as well. Now let's say this one and this one. Uh, yep, these three. I'm just holding down Control. I'm selecting them. OK, those are the next ones to load. Uh, then these ones are the next ones, and then yeah, so that's pretty good actually. It's in pretty much the order that we'd want it to load up. It's going to start with that bit of text, and then it's just going to load everything from the camera on. Although potentially we do want to load this one closest to the camera first, and then maybe that one that's going to be a bit smaller, and then that one. So we let's have a look at how that works. Pull the game object in here. We don't need to propagate local positions. We just hit export parts. And it's creating new um, new prefabs, sort of updating the prefabs. Let's go to the bundle folder that we were using before and select OK. Now I'm just going to pay attention to the create to this bundle folder because last time for some reason it didn't seem to export the iOS and I don't know if I missed having it selected but I'm just going to pay attention now and make sure that it does start to create the iOS content. All right, so I did decide actually to um, edit the video just because that um, export process took quite a long time to compile. I think the iOS components um, take quite a while to recompress in a slightly different format. For some reason, it takes quite a long time for that um, element of the process to, to export. Uh, so now I have all of my um, bundle content for the different platforms. And I've gone back into my level and removed that element there. I'll check um, to make sure that everything's working OK before I delete the um, object information. You don't, there's no, no particular reason why you need to delete this information, um, but I'm going to clean up just to, um, to make sure that uh, 
uh, nothing sort of gets it well just so that I'm not wasting space basically. Um, but you will need to delete it from here if you want to be able to preview new content over the top of it. Otherwise they'll be there at the same time. So I deleted that object that I made in this world folder. And now I've gone back into my uh, S3. Um, oh, what's going on there? One operation failed. It's a shame. I can't tell. It doesn't tell me which operation failed, which is a bit annoying. Um, so I have been... Um, let me just see what's there. So iOS, the folder things, folder components are all there by the looks of it. Um, web and the update time. So I've just gone through and um, copied the newly created um, platform folders back into where I had them before. So they would have written over what was there before. So let's have a look um, at what the results are. I am going to, I mean, potentially what I could have done actually is just um, deleted the manifest folders, those ones, and um, the uh, one that I was replacing. So for this one, I could have deleted these ones and these ones and then re-uploaded it and just replaced those files. But um, I thought it was sort of uh, safer to build everything all in one go. So let's go back to the um, menu folder, actually the options one, so we can set the quality. And I'll run this. I'll just pull it up so it's in its own little window. Um, there we go set it to the highest level. I'm going to delete the um, content that's already been downloaded and just paste that same location that we were using before um, for our online content. And let's have a look. So unfortunately it doesn't look like, I wonder if I can have a little bit of an experiment of how to get it to, I mean potentially just changing the names of the boxes. Um, it looks like it's just loading them in like alphanumeric order. Uh, so box one first, which is a little bit disappointing because it would have been nice to be able to control what order things came out um, just by changing the order in the list. But potentially I can modify the export script slightly um, so that it changes it adds a number at the beginning of the object or something according to the order that's in so that it will do that um, because that's a nice bit of functionality to be able to very easily control what order everything loads in at. Um, all of these parts loading now pretty fast you'll see that the um, it's a little bit brighter I changed the brightness uh, and turned off there was a little bit of fog that I had enabled so it was getting sort of this things a bit further away were a bit um, harder to see so that's not there now um, and you can see I've got my little uh, well our lighting hasn't come on I've got a final light as well uh, um, that we've added and we'll see what that looks like when it's finished but what we're looking at right now is is mainly paying attention to this block which is um, about to load so the box 10 and making sure that it all looks okay, that the fix worked okay. So it's not a bad surface, there's some weird artifacts and obviously where the end of the model comes in you could probably put some work into making it not look quite so weird. Um, and here we are, this part that was glitchy before, now um, looks all right, looks all good. Um, so that fix process worked pretty well. And there's our little sign, and I think you can just about see that there's a light somewhere above, 
that's casting a little bit of sort of um, warm light on the scene as well. So that's quite good. So there we go. Um, that's how to sort of selectively fix bits of geometry just in case the automated batch process um, doesn't produces some sort of weird glitches. Um, occasionally it'll happen just because of weirdness in the geometry, but it's not too hard to fix. All right, thanks very much.